Chapter 2 I wish all our missions were over as quickly as that one, Holt said. It was the following day. They had deposited the pirates with the garrison of Claridon, then hired rowers to bring them back upriver in the pirates' boat. They had reclaimed Tug and Abelard, where they had left them, stabled at the start of their river journey, and were riding home. I have to say, I expected we'd be going up and down the river for weeks before the pirates took the bait, Will said. Not just four days. What a stroke of luck. Yeah, I didn't fancy the idea of hiding under that stuffy tarpaulin for the next few weeks, Holt said. But I guess sometimes the luck falls our way. They rode slowly up the main street of Wensley, nodding to the people who greeted them as they passed. Most of the greetings were friendly, but Will noticed several townsfolk who reacted with surprise at the sight of the two rangers, then hurried away. He grinned. Looks like some people are surprised to see us back so soon, he said. I wonder what they've been up to. Holt raised an eyebrow. I'm sure we'll find out in the next few days. There are always people waiting to take advantage of the fact that we're absent. As the affair with the pirates was an internal Redmont Fife matter, they hadn't bothered to ask Gillen to fill in for them. But Holt had been a ranger long enough to know that even a peaceful village like Wensley had its share of petty thieves, gamblers, and confidence tricksters who would be ever ready to take advantage of his and Will's absence. They reached the turn-off to the little cabin in the trees, and Will nodded towards the castle, dominating the landscape on the hill above them. Are you heading up to the castle straight away? Holt hesitated, looked at the sun, and saw there were still several hours of daylight left. No, I'll come to the cabin. I can get started on my report for Crowley. Better you than me, Will said cheerfully. There were some advantages to being the junior ranger, he thought. Holt turned an unsmiling gaze on him for several seconds. Will shifted uncomfortably in the saddle. It was never a good sign when Holt looked at him like that. On second thoughts, the older ranger said, I might sit in the sun on the porch and let you write the report. I'll sign it, after I've made numerous corrections. It might not need any corrections, Will suggested tentatively, and Holt smiled at him. Oh, I'm sure I'll find lots of them. Will was about to answer when they heard the sound of galloping hoofbeats behind them. They both turned to see Alice about a hundred metres away, coming from the village and closing on them fast. Someone's glad you're home early, Holt observed, a slight smile touching the corner of his mouth. He liked Alice and he was delighted with the relationship that had grown between her and Will. Will smiled too at the sight of her. She sat a horse beautifully, he thought, and her long blonde hair streamed out behind her in a most attractive way. Then, as she grew closer, he could see no sign of a welcoming wave or smile, and the smile on his own face faded. Something's wrong, he said. Holt had come to the same conclusion. They stopped and turned their horses back to face her as she slid her white mare to a stop. Will, she cried, her voice anguished. I'm so sorry. Ebony's missing. Chapter 3 Missing? What do you mean missing? Will asked. Even as he said the words, he realised how ridiculous they were. There could only be one meaning to Alice's statement. She's gone. Three days ago. I left her by the cabin while I went to a meeting in the castle. I'm so sorry, Will. I should have taken her with me, but I thought... Will reached out and touched her hand to calm her. She was on the verge of tears, he could see. No reason why you should have, he said. I often leave her on her own at the cabin. When he and Holt had left to pursue the pirates, Alice had moved to the cabin temporarily to keep the young dog company and to feed her each day. But of course, Will had known Alice would have duties that would take her to the castle. Ebony wasn't a puppy. She would have appreciated Alice's company, but she could be trusted to stay close to the cabin if Alice was called away for an hour or two. Maybe she wandered off into the forest, Holt suggested, but Will shook his head. She wouldn't do that. She's trained to stay where she's told. 
He looked at Alice again. When did you last see her? Three days ago, as I said. I'd given her her morning feed and walked her down to the village. Then I had a message that I was needed at the castle. I left her on the porch and told her to stay. I came back two hours later and she was gone. I thought at first that she might have chased something into the forest, so I went looking for her and calling her, but there was no sign of her. What about the village? Will asked. Did anybody there see her? If there was any chance that Ebony had wandered, she would have gone no further than Wensley. She was a popular dog with the villagers and on a few occasions she had sought out their company. Alice shook her head. I asked, but nobody had seen her. I'm so sorry. Now an insidious worm of concern began gnawing at Will. Initially, he had thought there would be some simple explanation for the dog's absence. But Alice's agitated state was contagious. Alice was usually calm and in control, even in the worst crisis. He was beginning to think there was more to this matter than he had heard so far that there was something Alice was yet to tell him. Unless some accident had befallen Ebony, there was really only one reason for her continued absence. Someone must have taken her, he said. One look at Alice's face told him that this was what she feared. What is it? Tears began to flow down her cheeks as she answered. There was a band of travellers who came through the district. Travellers, Will interrupted. What sort of travellers? Although he had a suspicion that he already knew. Alice's next words confirmed it. Romers. They camped outside Wensley for a night, then moved on. I didn't even know they were there until I started asking about Ebony. They were here the day she disappeared. Romers were itinerant travellers who made their way about the country in horse-drawn caravans. They had no permanent home, but would camp for a day or two near villages, until such time as the village people moved them on. Romers usually travelled in extended family groups. Mothers, fathers, uncles, aunts and children roaming together. They were musicians and performers and would entertain villagers and farmers to earn their money. Usually, they seemed to be charming and romantic folk. And usually, when they were in an area for more than a day or two, things began to go missing. Clothing, small valuables, the occasional chicken or duck. Romers originated on the continent to the southeast of Toscana. But over the centuries, they had spread across the Western world and developed a cyclical pattern of travel. They would appear, stay a few days, move on, and not be seen for several years. Then one day they would return. They were a close-knit, mysterious group. Black-haired and swarthy of skin, their younger women were often remarkably beautiful and their men were hot-headed and argumentative, among themselves and with outsiders. There was another thing Will remembered about Romers. They were known to have a strong bond with their animals, horses, mules and dogs, although paradoxically, they often mistreated them. If Ebony had been taken by a band of roamers, it would be best if he got her back as soon as possible. I'm going after them, Will said decisively. They won't move fast. I should be able to catch them in a day or so. He began to swing Tug's head around, but Holt reached out and took hold of his bridle. Just hold on a moment, he said. If she has been taken by roamers, the last thing you'll want to do is go charging in demanding that they hand her over. What are you talking about, Holt? I want her back and I want her back now. But Holt was shaking his head. Romers are difficult people to deal with, he said. They resent outsiders and they're very clever at covering their tracks. They're nearly as good at staying concealed as we are. If they decide to keep Ebony hidden, you'll be hard pressed to find her. And if they realize they've stolen a ranger's dog, She'll be in danger. What sort of danger? Will asked. Chances are they'll kill her to get rid of the evidence, Holt told him. Will sat back in his saddle, open-mouthed. Kill her? Holt nodded. Rightly or wrongly, Romers have been badly treated for many centuries. 
they've developed a highly defensive frame of mind. If they realise that they have stolen a dog and she's the property of a ranger, they'll assume that the law will come down heavily on them. And I will, Will said hotly. But Holt put up a hand to calm him down. If you can find her, and the safest way for them will be to get rid of her, kill her and bury her, or drop her in the river. Anything to make sure you don't find her in their possession. You simply can't risk that. You're saying I should just let them get away with it? Will asked uncertainly. Not at all. Go after her, but do it carefully. Be subtle. Don't let them know you're a ranger, and don't let them know you're looking for a lost dog. Will sat, thinking over Holt's words, a troubled look on his face. After a little while, Alice spoke up. I'll go with you. Automatically, Will shook his head. No, you won't. Her mouth tightened into a thin line. Will, I feel responsible for this. I want to help. I think it might be a good idea, Holt said, and they both looked at him, Will in surprise and Alice with gratitude. He continued, They might be less suspicious of a young girl than they would of a fit young man of military age. They may be cunning, but they do have one weakness, which is that they regard women as second-class citizens, and they don't have any idea of how capable and how dangerous a courier can be. I think Alice might stand a better chance of finding out where the dog is. Won't Shadow be in their camp? Alice asked. Holt pursed his lips. Possibly. But they've got a stolen dog. She's valuable, and they may well expect her owner to turn up, looking for her. My bet is they'll keep her hidden somewhere close by their camp until they're well and truly away from the district. If you try to track them, Will, and find out where they're keeping her, there's a very good chance they'll spot you. On the other hand, I doubt they'd be concerned about Alice. As I said... They have little regard for women. There was another point that Holt was reluctant to raise. Will was already sufficiently concerned. But the more Holt thought about it, the surer he was that he had to mention it. There's something else you should know about roamers, he said. They often train dogs for fighting. Fighting? Will said, his voice almost a whisper. What do you mean? They train them to fight other dogs, then they stage fights and people bet on them. Or they meet up with other Roma bands and pit their champions against each other. It's vicious and cruel, and it's highly illegal, of course, which is another reason why they will be keeping the dogs out of sight. That's horrible, Alice said. Her face was white. Holt nodded. I know. It's hard to understand, given their reputation for loving animals but it's a fact. Will had been thinking over what Holt said, and now he shook his head. There's no point in them taking Ebony Holt. She's not very big, and she's definitely not aggressive. They'd never managed to turn her into a fighting dog. Holt took a deep breath, but he thought Will should know the worst. Even the best dog can turn savage if it's treated badly, Will. That's why it's important that you find her as quickly as possible.